Welcome back to The Young Scientist at the RDS. Next, we meet a judge who is a former winner, discuss goal line technology, leg armour for sports people, and the risks of social media. My name is Jervis Good. Uh, I was a winner 32 years ago in 1979, and I'm now a judge, and I've been a judge for the last three years um, in this wonderful, exciting competition to start a new year. Can you tell me about the project that you won with? I won with a project on earwigs, which sounds fairly esoteric and a, a little bit weird, but um, it was a fascinating study because you're looking at the biology of, 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 uh, of what was then a pest, and uh, it got me into all sort of modelling and quantitative modelling in relation to climate and in relation to populations. So it was a fascinating in, in introduction to um, some of these organisms that we think are, 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 are a little bit um, irrelevant, but actually teach us an awful lot about biology and ecology. And you're a judge here this year. Can, we, can you tell me about your participation in the Young Scientists over the, the past few years? Yes. I've been a judge now for, for th three years, and I think the, the standards are growing all the time. There's a huge, unbelievable enthusiasm. It's just like a wave. It take, takes you over. That, 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 uh, I, I think it, it's, also, it's out of the curriculum, so it allows people to sort of express themselves, but in a sort of disciplined manner. And um, there's an awful lot of enthusiasm. It, just, it, it always hits me every year with the, the amount of enthusiasm that, 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 that's out there. Can you explain the judging process to us here? Yes, well, the judging process, uh, it's, it's balanced in that there's three judges for every project as a minimum. Um, and so that, that there's any, any judge who, who would, would tend, tend to be a, a little bit um, um, overmarking or undermarking, that that will be balanced, that will be balanced out. Um, and also, it's, um, it, it's a very structured process. It's marked uh, relating particularly to the scientific method and to the, the, the type of uh, data analysis, how they produce data, how they pro solve problems, um, how they know about the general background um, information in an area, their general understanding of, of technical issues if they're, if, they're, if, they're, if they're dealing with a more technical project, and also their flair, their skill, and finally then their, their communication, their ability to, to get the thing across. And some of them are just so communicative, it, 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 it's, it's great. And, it's, it's, it's getting all of those together um, really makes a good, a good project. Last year's winners went on to win the EU competition for the Young Scientist. Can you explain to us the level, the standard that we are seeing here on display in the RDS? I think it's top, I th it, and it has been for a large number of years, because um, I, I think we, we, we're behind the exhibition. It's not, it's not just the students who are at the exhibition, but there's a screening process. So there's about maybe three times the number of students who are actually have applied originally. Um, so there's a huge population of interest there, which I don't think is, is, the, is the same in other, in other countries. And also just we're very good at it. Are you proud to be part of this exhibition? Extre extremely so. It's, it's, it's one of the best in, in, in Europe and in the world, and it's recognized as such. My name is Ronan Walsh, this is Lee Mahoney and Caelan Finn and the name of our project is Was the Score Yes or No and the idea of our project came from where an umpire found it difficult to see if the point was over the bar or did it go wide. Can you tell me more about the technology that you developed in this? Yeah, the technology was uh, C++, it's a program language. We also installed a library called OpenCV, which basically detects objects and outputs it back to you. And first of all, what we did was we set it up, we got connected to the webcam, we looked for a circle, a sphere, and then we uh, got the color of it. Then we compared the radius of that to the radius of the ball as it was in the goal. And if the radius was obviously higher than that, then it was obviously a score. So that's basically that. Anything you'd like to add? Um, well, while doing project, we kind of run into a lot of problems, like the lighting, uh, the, the ball size, um, but we had to just step it up um, to the plate and deal with it. Uh, but yeah, that's all, and it worked out in the end, so that's great. Yeah. Do you think this will help referees with controversial decisions? Do you hope to, that clubs will pick it up? I hope so, yeah. It's much cheaper than what's out there at the moment, so hopefully they will. Have you approached any clubs maybe about trialling it out or would you like to be approached by companies? Uh, we approached the GA about it because they're thinking about doing Hawkeye at the moment which is a much expensive system. It's basically using the detection of a ball again using multiple cameras though. So. Are there any particular goals or points that you can remember that were controversial that, uh, that you still remember? 
Not sure, no. Yeah, there was no. Uh, Limerick versus Wexford, 2011, where in the last dying second of the game, a uh, free was given. It went so high, the umpire, one umpire said it was wide, and the other one said it was a point. And that's where the controversy happened, over between the umpires and the referees. And Limerick went on to win the game by the point that was given. Would you like your technology to be used over in the the championships in England and across the world? Yeah, if we made a few adjustments to it and kind of understand it a bit more, yeah, it could be, and you never know, we could be out there someday. Hi, uh, my name, and this is Adam, and we're from Mount St. Michael Ross Carberry, and we thought of the idea of the lower leg armour, just basically to uh, protect your leg, and we kind of thought of the idea when we were watching soccer and just seeing so many players getting injured week after week and we just thought, you know, is there a way that we can kind of fix this really? Can you tell me how this lower leg armour is different to what's currently on the market? Well, basically it's just, it protects the knee, the shin, the calf and the ankle all at the same time while being lighter and stronger than what's currently on the market. So with the materials that we've used, it's, it's basically a revolution in the shin pad that's currently there. Can you tell me about the materials that you did use and the flexibility? Um, we've used carbon fibre as our main source of protection and neoprene rubber as an under layer for it. And the flexibility is because the carbon fibre is in discs, so it allows full movement of the leg while still giving you full protection. And have you got people to try this product out? Um, we've gotten some under 14s that we coached to help us by just wearing it and telling us how they how it felt on their legs and was it flexible and stuff like that. And all the results came back positive about it. So what are the next steps? Do you hope to develop it more? Do you hope to get it out on the market? Um, we would hope to come back next year anyway with a finished product, a better enhanced version and hopefully have it on the market soon. We would prefer nearly to sell it to a sports manufacturer who would then produce it and sell it to shops. My name's Claire Ault, this is Saoirse Riley and Isha Driscoll. We're from Loretto High School Beaufort in Dublin and our project title is So You Think It's Only Your Friends, Think Again. Um, our project idea is social media awareness and to aware people about the dangers of social media and where, it, where your information goes on social media sites such as like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we have a Twitter page which we set up to um, do tips and facts on, like to give tips and facts about awareness on social media sites. And we have done surveys and interviews and Nisha will tell you more about them. So we did surveys on people's usage and their privacy settings on their social media sites. So we found out that 54% of people we interviewed were constantly logged into their social media sites, either on their iPhones or their Androids, and that 48% said that they would accept friend requests from people they'd never seen in person. But most, the majority said that their, uh, their accounts were on private, but they're still opening themselves up to dangers by accepting these friend requests. Eight out of 10 people we interviewed said that they were on over five social media sites, so it's becoming more of a thing to be on so many social media sites. But we also found out that many people don't know where their information goes, who can view it. They said that their friends could view it, but this isn't true because other people can get easy access to your account. So young people don't really know anything about how their social media sites work, and Sush will tell you about what we want to do about this. Well, from our results and interviews, we found out that something needs to be done about this because people are like on spend their daily lives on these sites. So maybe like a class once a month, we we're thinking of writing up like a book to give out to school so they can give out and like teach the class more about like more on social media sites like say an SBHE instead just internet safety and that like something needs to be done because it is part of our like generation and it's getting bigger and bigger. That's all from the Young Scientist at the moment. There'll be more News Now coverage later on.